What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got something really interesting for you and could end up saving your butt if you're having issues like me. Basically, I have a laptop. The thing doesn't want to boot up and I have files that I need to get off the drive. Simple enough, you pull out the drive from the laptop, place it in an external enclosure, plug it into your PC and pull the files you need off of it. That's when I had the idea, instead of trying to reinstall and fix Windows on a terribly old Pentium laptop, why don't I try and boot Windows up using a virtual machine and the physical hard drive that I've now just taken out of my laptop and plugged into my PC. And to my surprise, that is absolutely something you can do and it's relatively simple. It took a couple of extra steps, some extra troubleshooting, but I've got a pretty simple way that you can copy for absolutely free to go ahead and power up a virtual machine from a physical hard disk with an existing Windows installation on it. And if you'd like to, you can reinstall Windows or any other operating system onto it using a faster PC and plug it into an old PC where it should work just as good as if you installed it there straight away. So anyways, without further ado, you'll need Hyper-V installed and working on your computer. I'm not gonna cover that in this guide as it can take some time. Anyway, all you have to do is take the hard drive that already has Windows or another operating system on it and plug it into your PC either by placing it inside or by using an external enclosure, plugging it in and then plugging it into your computer via USB, which is exactly what I've done. I've now just plugged it in and turned it on and in just a moment you should see it connects to my computer. And there we go, it's now connected. And if I pull across a Windows Explorer, you'll see a couple of new drives here. This drive and this drive are both brand new now that I've plugged the drive into my computer. Of course, the main C drive, which is program files, uses Windows, etc. This is the operating system that I'd like to boot into. So how do I do it? Well, it's actually incredibly simple. All you have to do is first of all, take this drive offline, i.e. digitally disconnected from your computer, but not physically. In order to do that, hit start and type in disk manager and open up either disk manager or create and format hard disk partitions, which takes you to the same screen over here, disk management. When you get to here, all you have to do is locate the correct drive letter, which you can get by looking at the graph at the bottom or by looking at the capacity over here for the drive that you're looking for. I can see disk eight, I drive 465 gigs. And of course, if I turn off the drive next to me, it'll disconnect here and will disappear from this list. Plugging it in, we'll get it to show once again as disk eight. It should also be the last drive on the list as it usually goes newest to oldest. Anyway, now that we've done this, simply locate it at the bottom and then right click the title or anywhere in this block, then click offline. Once you've done this, it'll be disconnected from your computer and you'll see it disappears out of your Windows file manager. That's great. It's now sitting in an offline mode and is still accessible by your computer, but isn't actually usable by you in the normal Windows file system. Now that we've done that, we can successfully load it up into a virtual machine and boot from it. So I'll go ahead and start up Hyper-V Manager and of course create a new virtual machine. There's one here already, but I'll be starting from scratch. On the right hand side, click new, followed by virtual machine. Now inside of here, click next. Give it a title such as say physical, click next, and make sure that you have generation one selected. If you select generation two, you need to do a couple of extra steps and I haven't quite got that working just yet, but generation one works just fine and much more flawlessly. I'll have links in the description down below to get you started with generation two, even though I haven't got it working yet. Anyway, so generation one, next. Give it a certain amount of RAM. I'll use 1024 times eight, as I have 128 gigs in my computer, and eight gigs sounds about right. Just for this one, I'll disable dynamic memory, though this isn't too important. You can of course customize settings later as you would any other virtual machine. Next, I'll give it an internet connection. Next, and when you get to the screen about connecting a virtual hard drive, click attach a virtual hard disk later. Then next and finish. Upon doing this, it'll appear on the list. Locate it, right click it, and then click settings. Now inside of here, we'll be going through a couple of things. If you're using generation two, you'll need to uncheck secure boot inside of the BIOS or UEFI screen. Not too sure, maybe security, but of course, because we're using generation one, we don't have to worry about too much. Something I usually do is give it more processes. I'll give it six as I have 12 cores, 24 threads because I'm using a 3900X. Six sounds about right for this computer. Under IDE controller zero, the first one, select it and then select hard drive, then click add. Inside of here, we'll be selecting physical hard disk and you should see a hard drive appearing here. 
If you haven't successfully taken it offline or it's not compatible for some reason or another, I haven't really heard of this, you won't be able to select it here. You may be told that you have to disable something if you pick generation two, but in generation one, simply taking the drive offline allows you to use it here. Click apply to change settings and do go through the other options on this list, customizing them as you see fit. You can add an ISO or a physical disk drive here in order to actually access something in the operating system, such as a custom BIOS repair, Puppy Linux, or even just the Windows system recovery disk. At the very bottom over here, under checkpoints, we need to disable checkpoints as these only work for non-physical hard drives because creating a complete backup of this would be rather annoying. Something along those lines, you shouldn't have checkpoints enabled when you're using a physical drive as far as I understand. At least with generation two, generation one, I would think the same. Anyway, now we're done here. Click OK and you're ready to connect to it and boot up the system. So I'll right click connect and then click start. And to your surprise, you should be greeted with the Windows logo or whatever operating system you currently have installed. Now from here, it's basically just a normal virtual machine, except the files are stored on a physical disk. Pretty cool. If you're like me and you have a terribly old laptop that you're going to be running as a server, but it takes forever to move around the cursor and actually do things on, Cool, plug it into a main PC, do all of your work necessary, take complete use of your network, and then plug it back into your old laptop that barely has any network bandwidth to begin with and runs like molasses. Of course, you can adjust the resolution and everything else you can with a virtual machine. And there we have it. It took a couple of seconds on a black screen and eventually you load up into it. In generation two, as far as I've heard, you need to sometimes restart it a couple of times to get it to work, but it seems to work just fine here. Other than that, you shouldn't have too many issues. I'm using Revision OS just because it's a slimmed down version of Windows 10, because I'm using it basically as just the server on a device that has probably two or three gigabytes of RAM. But anyways, you can see it's fully working. Of course, it's rather slow as it's a terribly old hard drive. But of course, that's up to the hardware rather than the software. It works perfectly fine and it's probably quite slow, especially now because it's starting up all of the background processes, the servers, etc., that I've got running on here for different things around the house. Anyway, it's working properly. You can copy paste into it from your normal computer. Once again, it's a normal virtual machine. You can shut it down as per normal. And of course, unplug your hard drive when it's completely off. Note that if you do want to access files on your main computer, you need to come back into disk management and mount the drive once again by right clicking and then clicking online. I don't think it would be very healthy to do this while the VM is running. I haven't tried and I don't recommend you try. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name has been Tech Number for Troubleshoot. Hopefully this video helps you, especially in this niche situation. And I'll see you all next time. Ciao.